Fixate on Code, episode 14. Oh yes, Larry Buerta here and you're listening to Fixate on Code, the weekly bite-sized podcast where I talk to the best devs about their favorite strategies for writing great code. And today I'll be chatting to Yuho Vepsalainen. Yuho, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty fine. So, I mean, we have still winter, but spring is coming. Yuho is the creator of Survive.js, a project that promises to take you from apprentice to master in both React.js and Webpack. On top of that, Yuho is also a core contributor to Webpack. When not writing books or code, Yuho can be found on stage at conferences around Europe, having already added Kharkiv.js, Helsinki.js, WebDev and Sausages, and React.js Barcelona to the notches in his belt. Yuho, can you fill in some of the gaps in that intro and tell me a little bit about what you get up to when you're not writing code? Yeah, so what I, that, that's, that's a good question. So... Most of the day, of, of course, I write code, but I have this uh, little thing known as art. So what I like to do is to I like to paint. I like to, I like to draw. So it's like completely different from coding, but it's it's refreshing, and you actually can find commonalities between with, between art and and coding. So it's it's kind of cool. And that's awesome. There's a lot of people mixing art and code, and I think it's an aspect that gets heavily neglected in our field. Now, Yuho, tell me, what were the steps that got you to where you are today and what made you realize that you want to write books about JS? Yeah, so it was around 2014. I, I had this uh, little crisis because, I mean, I, I, I used to do contracting. Uh, not, the rate was not that great. And the problem is that you're always hunting for hours. So I figured that maybe it's easier to do something else. Maybe it should be a product. And uh, I felt that that there's like the I mean if you, if you look look at Webpack in 2014, it was really confusing. I found uh, a blog post by Christian Alfoni. I commented uh, to Christian that maybe there should be a cookbook, and it went from there. So we started working on, on a little mm-hmm. little wiki, and then I started writing this little book that became a bigger book and now it's two books and so you do like one little thing in the past and it kind of ripples so that's what happened in my case so now i have actually a little business running around that little comment i made a couple of years ago so not bad and webpack is infamous for its barrier to entry so there's a lot of opportunity to help people get on board and understand how it can improve their workflows now tell me what was the worst experience you've ever had on a project yeah, but it might be like uh, three months after I started. So I started like really, really pushing, pushing, pushing the effort around April 2015. And three months in, I mean, I be, I have been, I've been selling this book for three months. And I realized that I have made like thousand dollars. So it's like, uh, what to do now? Because this isn't working. So there was this little crisis, but then uh, this guy, uh, Jesus from Spain, came and started helping me with editing the book and I figured out a more sustainable model and it kind of started going from there. So I had this really rough start, but I I think I I found something that uh, works at least to some extent. What do you think you could have done to prevent that rough start in the beginning? I don't know if there's like uh, an easy way to avoid crisis. I mean, I believe that you should have crisis because if you never have crisis, you have never tried. So you need these experiences that shape you as a person and then then kind of really, really teach you. So I I don't think like avoiding would have been the right way, but instead like going, going to watch the problem really hard, as hard, as hard as I could was like the, like a good way. Because I mean, when, when you're starting, you have like this. You have like lots of obstacles, so every, everything is pretty much against you. You have like no name. Uh, it's hard to kind of get noticed and all that. So, but yeah, lots of obstacles when you start. And just like development in general, it takes a little bit of resilience and pushing through those obstacles to get where you want to be. Now, Yuho, is there any specific tool or service you use that you'd hate to be without? The most important thing. I would say it's one application known as OmniFocus. So OmniFocus allows me to track what I have to do in the future, and it allows me to project. So I can write these little projects, and I can actually do release planning. So I have like future versions of my book listed. 
listed in the application and I, and I what I can do is as I get feedback or I, I get ideas I just put them to the single single system and when I have time I write and I, I, I use the system to work on these tasks so it's it's just a, like one easy it's easy way for me to get all of my ideas from my head my head out of my head and uh, then I don't have to remember anything I just have one list of things to do and I just do when I have time and it's really simple from my perspective and getting that focus without any distraction is so important especially when you need those hours to really push out the challenging work so where in your daily work are you still meeting frustration where do you feel there's room for things to be done in a more effective way yeah that that's that's actually very very hard question i mean uh, but i i think i could like uh, cut, cut down distractions so if i have chat open maybe i shouldn't have chat open because it's easy to get like interrupts interruption or interrupted by something uh, interesting so then then you do something else for a while and then you notice that oh that was like one hour or two and then i didn't get the thing done so i could be like more more focused at times so I've started using this technique called the Eisenhower matrix to deal with distraction. And the basic premise is that for all your tasks, you evaluate what's important and what's urgent. And then you basically focus on all the important tasks first. And then everything else is basically a, basically a distraction and should just be avoided. And it's had a massive impact on my productivity. Yeah, I have to look that up. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking, I, I do something like that informally. But if I can do it as a formal process, that will work. So, Yuho, in terms of new projects, libraries, or frameworks, what are you most excited about at the moment? Yeah, so we have or had this problem of maintaining packages in Webpack because we have like something like 40 packages to maintain. So the, it's like a big problem. How do you keep all of these packages up to date in terms of infrastructure? Uh, that's something I and Artem thought about because we have lots of projects that solve the problem of starting a project. So you have like thousands mm-hmm. and thousands of boilerplates. So you can get started really fast, but uh, boilerplates, they don't solve the problem of maintenance. So that's why we decided to approach the problem for a different direction. What if there was a tool that allowed you to synchronize a uh, project configuration mm-hmm. on single command? So that's what we did. So we have something known as Marmot or MRM. And it is a tool that allows you to write uh, like a configuration. So you have ESLint and testing setup and whatever. So you have this collection of setup and you package it. And what you do is you consume this package. And after that, you run single command. And what happens next is magic. You write the command and it updates your project to match the packets. So you get all the setup with single command. And if the original package happens to change, you run the command again and get the changes. So effectively, we have like one command solution for maintaining all of these 40 packages right now. So instead of having to patch each and every one by hand, we install the package to each and write the command and that's it. Of course, there's like some manual fiddling, but it solves a tons of, I mean, it, it's, it solves a huge problem for us. So Marmot is basically helping you guys keep your dot files in sync across multiple projects, but you could just as easily use it to bootstrap a new project, couldn't you? Yes, so it, yeah, it, it, of course it allows you to create new projects. That's what I did today. So I... I took the package, I included it into my project, I ran the command, I had the working setup. So I didn't have to think, I just ran the command and that that was it. I had beautiful package configuration done. Uh, It it simplifies our life so much Uh, because it it solves two problems. It solves the problem of starting projects and maintaining them. So it's like the next step from boilerplates. And managing dot files across 40 related projects would be a nightmare. I could definitely use Marmot on my side. So, Yuho, which specific aspect of our programming has dramatically changed the way that you think about and write code? Yeah, so I think uh, the answer is, is quite easy. It's uh, Haskell. I mean, H- Haskell, the language. Uh, it was in my university days. Of course, before that, I, I used to think in terms of objects and ob- object-oriented programming. 
I did I, I didn't have like a proper appreciation for functional programming. So I think what learning Haskell did it it kind of it gave me this uh, appreciation of different models. So what I actually like to do right these days is to think in declarative ways. I I don't think like uh, uh, like how, how to do this and that. I think like what. So I think on I think on higher level and I think in terms of composition. So have you taken a look at the Elm project at all? Yeah, I, I'm aware of it. Uh, the great thing about Elm is that it eliminates runtime errors. So that that's something that uh, JavaScript suffers from. So it's very easy to write the code that has error in it, and you don't know. But if we have a proper environment like Elm, we can eliminate a whole category of errors, and that's amazing. Yeah, the Elm guys are really doing an incredible job and some really exciting stuff coming out from that side. And with that, we've come to the end of our first segment. Yuho, I'm about to throw some quick fire questions your way. Let's do this. What is the best advice about programming you've ever received? Yeah, it's the best. Uh, I think it has to do with uh, with naming. So give, give meaningful names. Which personal habits do you attribute to writing better code? Personal habits. Yeah, I, I will cheat and say drawing because if I can draw well, I can code well. So if I can like think think in terms of abstractions. Uh, it might be like a graphical abstraction or whatever. So I, I can also do that in software. So you, you have to like draw these parallels and, and uh, find uh, skills that are equivalent somehow. If you could recommend one book to join your System.js books on programming, what would it be and why? Uh, I think uh, for me, the most influential one was Code Complete 2. So it's, it's, a, it's a massive book. It's something like 700 pages or more, but uh, it's something you read, you read once or twice. And it will, it will, it kind of changes the way you think about programming. So it, it's one of those like basic books, and uh, it's it's just something you have to do. I, I I think Uncle Uncle Bob has a couple of really good ones too, but uh, the code complete is like where I would start from. And it'll make a great accompaniment to both clean coder and clean code. Yes. Now, Yuho, imagine you wake up and you have no recollection of ever writing code. With the tools, books, and courses available today, how would you go about learning to program from scratch? Yeah, so I will uh, learn it the way I did in the past. So I will start from electronics. So if you have something physical and you understand how physical components work and how to design uh, this like more complicated like circuits, and uh, as it happens, you deal with components. And if you look at the web, what are we doing right now? We are, of course, doing everything in terms of components. So if you can pick up the ideas of encapsulation and component design and, uh, and abstraction through that, it will help a lot because then you don't get this package. You get like like really, really fresh view on, on how to design and how, how to think. Yeah, components are a lesson we could have learned from electronics a long time ago. Yep. Now, Yuho, let's wrap up with your top tip on how to work smart and the best way that we can connect with you. Yeah, so how to work smart. So you have to have some concrete goal in somewhere in the future. And you have to take a step, preferably each, each day. It doesn't have to be a huge step, but it has to be some something. Because every time you take a step, you get closer to your goal. Uh, and of course, you can you can reach me through many ways. I have this public chat uh, at Gitter. Uh, you can reach me through Twitter. Of course, the site survivechase.com is the easiest way to find these ways. But yeah, I don't mind chatting. So you can you can you can poke me if you have like book related questions or anything like that. <laughs> to everyone out there, you've been hanging with Yuho Vepsalainen and Larry Buerta. Head over to fixate.it where you'll find links and timestamps for everything we've been talking about today. And of course, head over to survivejs.com to become a master at React.js and Webpack. And Yuho, thank you for sharing your journey with Fixate on Code. Keep pushing the limits and keep pushing great code. <laughs>